but before you freak out and panic, I realized 0.2 seconds after ending the last video's recording that I missed the very end of that flash. So I will add that part to that video. Like, there will be a little, like, oh my god, it's like 0.25 whatever after it that will be like, oh, by the way, this. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, though. I don't know if I should stitch it into the file that hasn't been made yet. And what I'm talking about right now will be, like, completely nullified as a result. Making these recordings is a little bit like Karkat and his memos. I'm starting to be like, mm. Like, I'm actually... I haven't watched my oldest videos since, like, a few days after I made them. Which was months ago for some of them. And I'm like, should I go back and watch and marvel at what an idiot I was? Or will I fall in kismasissitude with myself? Anyway, this is the first part I could find where nothing was happening. So... There he is. There he is. Pouring the licorice dogs. There he is again, walking around the house. Does he just pace around the house as he talks? Uh, got the door. He's rather angry. And it's been adventurous place. Please. Getting bonked on the head. Is it a bonk on the head? And we'll just take care of that by bending it. Yep, there you go. I did a knot for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Piss the fuck off. Fucking douchebag. Fuck you up. Oh, look. Look at Scotty dogs. Mmm, delicious. Rose. I think I'll take all of these. Eat them. Yeah, put a whole bowl of them in here. What am I had? So many. Funny dogs. <laughs> there he is, dumping them right there. <laughs> Put in my head. Oh, so that's a coat rack, huh? I'm digging the suspenders. What else you got in this dump? Fucking coat rack. He disappeared. And he got that bottle of oil that was in Little Buddy's cozy metal shack. Place to look a lot better on fire. I swear. Let's just pour some of this up here, a little over there. It's starting to look kind of nice. Slick. An oil slick. Pour in this room. Looking at fucking pictures or some shit, I don't know. Yeah, just put some right here. It's not even paying attention. Nah, fucking light is not working. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Ah, it's so perfect. Let it all on fire. It looks nice and burning. <laughs> Oh dear. Hmm. This won't do. All the greenery is burning so nicely. Mm. Uh, what do I know what to do with him? Slick. Slick. Would you would you please come into the other room? <laughs> Mr. Slick, if you would. Fire alarm. <sighs> What's it even going to do? I mean, for crying out loud. You rang, boss? Why, yes, I did. Okay, putting out the fire. I'm actually using vaguely Boston accents for the felt to counterpart 
the uh, the Midnight Cruise delightful Brooklyn accents. Death, there's so much fire here. <laughs> oh my fucking god. What the fuck is going on here? Everything's fucking burning. Yup. Getting this fire under control. Plymouth Fire Department. Yup. Looking nice. Now, what the fuck are y'all doing? He picked up the all from uh, Hearts Boxcars, obviously. Oh, fire here. Looking nice. Now, what are you ever thought of? Lighting shit on fire in here? Fucking burn your face. <laughs> hey, no fucking throwing shit. Ah, it's getting fucking beat to death. Ah. Oh, we need the rest of the fountain here. That's, that's not good. Ugh. I'll have to flip my coin. Shit. Ah, get the steadies up in here. Ah. Ugh. Um, running, running away. I should go fucking run. Fuck you. Fuck you and the shit you came in on. Somebody fucking claw. No. Nah. Okay, from Dorchester all the way here. Fucking shoot you. Ah, fucking bullets. here. Doc. Doc Scratch. Hey. Where are you? Do I have to do everything myself? And if you're wondering why Snowman still has a Brooklyn accent, she's a Carapacean. So she's like the Midnight Crew. Brooklyn eyes. Hmm. Can't let you boys out of my sight for one fucking instant. Look at you. I have to fix this. Always have to fix this. Always by myself. You are a fucking moron. So get out of my sight. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to kill you, Slick, until you finally stay dead, you fucking cockroach. Hmm. You got blood on my cigarette holder. Oh dear. The two of you, please. You need to stop. I won't stand for this fighting here. Oh, oh my. Come here. What are you gonna do? Oh, no, no. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Shit. Ugh. We can't. We can't have this. So, this frog? Dave? What? I found two. Oh, awesome. These are the frogs you wanted, right? You got it. Hmm? So, this would be the one I missed. The end of.
Who's smashing it, though? Stop! Uh, clock's destroyed. 1,001 out of 1,000. Uh, face palm x zero. Oh, for crying out loud. Why do I invite you over? It's like, I can tolerate many things from a guest. Uh, Kurt Manners, egregious womanizing, murdering the help, casual arson. Even atrocious candy bowl etiquette. It's three o'clock. Hmm? Uh, dead. Pretty much for good. But it is the desecration of a priceless timepiece where I must draw the line. I'm afraid I must now insist that you take your beating quite personally. Break. the fuck was that for? Were you even paying attention? Riska, wait! Oops, hold on. Tentacle therapist TT ceased pestering arachnid's grip, AG. Ectobiologist EB began pestering arachnid's grip, AG. Hey, are you there? I did what you said, but I can't tell if it worked. Hello? You didn't fly off to fight Jack yet, did you? I hope not. Anyway, all that stuff you said sounds fun to me. I have hells of, ca of the cage flicks in my library. I'd not even care that you're an alien. You see, cage is the universal constant which unites us all. Not John Cusack. Well, if you haven't flown away, I will look forward to your message in the future. It would be nice to talk about all the stuff that happened. Anyway, bye. Oh, God. Hey! Oh my fucking hell, this is so insanely awkward and sad. What is? Hang on. Arachnid's grip, AG, ceased trolling ectobiologist, EB. Heads. <coughs> <coughs> the fuck? I will end you. Oh, and he's got his gun, too. Carcinogeneticist CG began trolling ectobiologist EB. Hey. Carcat, was that you? Where's Riska? She... She what? <laughs> Shit. I feel like an asshole for reading this whole thing. What whole thing? You mean what she wrote? Yeah. Why are you snooping around on her computer? Because... Wow, okay. So let me ask. Did you both actually like each other? Um... Like, I mean, something vaguely resembling actual, genuine, mutual sentiment or whatever, not some lopsided, pining bullshit. What are you talking about? Did you like her, you windsock-headed shitmouth, is what I'm asking. Well, yeah, why? Okay, that's fine. Then we'll talk about it later. Talk about what? I need you to be able to think straight. We have important shit to go over, and I don't have much time. And so on. <laughs> Uppercut! <laughs> All right, like what? Plans. What plans? Never mind that. First, get out of the fucking blackout to a place where I can see you. Leave now. I'll contact you in a while once you've landed. Landed where? Lohack, obviously. Oh, obviously. Well, how else do you think you're going to cause a scratch, idiot? Do you have any clue what's going on? Wait, of course you don't. You are wearing pajamas and giggling at clouds like each other- Like each one was shaped like the rudest bit of naked anatomy of human I can recognize. Naked- of naked anatomy a human can recognize. Ah, uh, words. No, I'm not. I mean, yes, I am wearing some pretty nice pajamas. But I know lots of things. Like about the tumor, which I've already recovered. Wait, I mean, the- the tumor- wait, fuck. I mean- Oh, screw it. You know, the big bomb and some other stuff like that. I'm totally in the loop. Great. Awesome. Now get going. So, I have to cause the scratch, huh? Okay, I'm done here. Talk to you in one second for me. One long, windy fucking journey for you. <laughs> Carson Genesis CG ceased trolling ectobiologist EB. Carson Genesis CG began trolling ectobiologist EB. Okay. Hi. <laughs> you let me down, slick. So, they're on the green moon of Alternia. That's where the felt was? Hmm. Covered in purple blood. <laughs> Let's get down to business. Aren't you going to ask me how my journey was? 
No. It was long and windy, but a lot of fun. I really like flying. It's so much fun. Oh, I bet it is just the biggest fucking blast a guy can have without a pair of shame globes secured in his two trembling fists. You haven't tried it? Every douche got to fly but me, even the cripple. May he rest in peace, I fucking guess. <laughs> Wait, is that the guy who Vriska killed? Oh god, you actually know about that? You know what? I give the fuck up trying to understand you and her. <laughs> Why? Egbert, god damn it. Will you shut your mouth and listen? Okay, but is something wrong? What? A little while ago you talked to me and it sounded like you were in danger and it sounds like some people died, but you never told me what happened. Then I got distracted by a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, something is wrong. Or was. A bunch of us died. The end. I don't really want to talk about it. Oh, are you sure? Yes, and not just because, oh, the clock is rapidly ticking down to something we're calling the critical moment. And no, I don't know what that is. So close your reeking question, geyser, before it asks. But I'm your friend, aren't I? Oh, God. Well, John, I can't handle talking about it, okay? I just got done uh, dealing with Gamzee. And I'm feeling pretty emotional about it, so please, no. Who is Gamzee? He was my best friend. Really? I thought Terezi was your best friend. Or, wait, maybe she was her girlfriend. I forget. My think pan, it hurts. It is presently threatening to make me its bitch, John. Is that what you want? Do you want your cool alien pal to become the batch of a raw, throbbing think pan? Such is the scenario before us. Also, I said batch instead of bitch. Whoops. Sorry, I don't mean to be nosy. I just want to know some things about your situation. I'm concerned. Gamzee was my very good friend, who was this goofy, lovable bullshit clown who's went psycho and kill some people. I liked him a lot. I don't know, I guess my best friend is really just the guy who I happen to be feeling most sentimental to at the moment. Is that a fucking crime? <laughs> no. I think I know how you feel. So he killed some people, and then what? So then I... Mm. It's okay, you can tell me. John, trust me, you wouldn't understand. It's just a troll thing. Humans wouldn't get it. You might think I was a shithead, and I can't deal with that now on top of everything, so let's drop it. Mm, okay, if you say so. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot. I've been dying to know since I left the battlefield. Do you know if Rose is okay? Did it work? I thought I could rely on you, of all people. <laughs> She's fine. She woke up alive on Durs. Really? That's the rule, John. You kiss a dead player in time, and their dream self takes over, assuming they still have one. Oh, wow. It's incredible you reached God-tier status without even understanding the more mundane means of resurrection available. Wait, your unfailing cluelessness makes it just the opposite of incredible. My mistake. So, I guess... It would not have worked on my dad, then? Or Rose's mom? No, but that is exactly what I wanted to picture happening behind the black curtain, John. You snogging up your dead-hatted man, Lucis. Thank you for that mental image. Or Rose's adult human woman, Lucis. Maybe a dead woman sweeps your senior is more of your cup of sauce, since apparently you are not a homosexual. Whatever that even means. Not even to speak of your race's absurd qualms with the notion of incest, which again, still sort of wondering how that can even be a thing. Er, uh, is that your game, Egbert? Have you had your eye on Madame Lalonde and you've been waiting for a convenient resurrection opportunity to bust out your most passionate smooch motifs kept in reserve and in front of her dead female offspring, no less? Just a shame. Just shameful. Ugh. Well, she is a very pretty lady, but that seems like a really inappropriate thing to say. <laughs> Think about Carcat. You don't say! <laughs> oh, you don't say. Nicolas Cage meme. What are we even talking about anymore? I don't know. I am frankly pretty upset about finding them dead in the magic castle, and I guess I was wondering aloud if something could have been done. Or at least maybe to talk about it without angry tirades being involved. Exactly. You were embarking down tragedy lane, and we've got to stamp that garbage out. We can't have you getting all morose when we've got so many irons in the fire. Fuck. Loaded phrase. Forget I said that. Just climb your shit up and forget your stupid cardigan, like I did with my dear crab monster custodian, who I adored in no way whatsoever. You are being a douche. Wait, what am I saying? You're always a douche. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Your dad was a crab monster? Shut the fuck up! We were talking about something important. Rose, remember? Yes. She's waiting on Durst for your bomb to be delivered. It will arrive safely a little later. 
Oh, great. How do you know it gets there? Jade told me. To do what it is to you. To do what it is you do best. Doodly firearms. I wish I had a gun cocking sound effect to play right here. Hmm? What's going on here? Jade from further ahead in your timeline. Before my piece of shit clown bro made everything terrible here, she and I were hammering out these plans. I talked to her across pretty much the full spread of her timeline until the scratch starts and the feed cuts out. So I have a sense of the whole picture here, and it's my job to put some things into motion. That's cool. It's nice to hear you're working together. I should pester Jade and see what she's up to. You should sit your ass tight. <laughs> yeah, ass tight. <laughs> and do the fuck what I tell you the fuck to fucking do. Oh. Anyway, she and Dave do a lot of frog breeding, accelerating the process significantly by exploring time travel with help from me and Kanya, since we were in charge of frog duties in our session. Is it always the night with the person of space? Frog duties? Wait, which one is Kanya again? Don't interrupt. I'm following a train of thought. Okay, Kanya is my other best friend. And she was the hero of space, like Jade, which means she's the stoker of the forge and is basically in charge of frogs, which sounds retarded, I know. You breed the right frog to make the universe you want to make, which is a long, arduous process, and I kind of fucked it up in my game, but that's a whole other story which I'll get to later, okay? Wow, okay. She and Dave ran into Jack, where, which I'm sure she must have, he must have saw coming, because I've never seen anyone exploit time travel so shamelessly as him, not even Aradia. Aradia? Just another dead troll, who cares? Hmm. Stop frowning. She was already dead before she died. Mm. So he, she and Dave fought with him a little, and long story short, he died. What? But it's fine. I guess that was his plan, like some bizarre useless last stand, even if he didn't tell Jade, who was pretty freaked out until I talked her through it. Did she kiss him too? <laughs> that would explain this then. Damn. You are not supposed to kiss her, Mr. Noir. You're supposed to kill her. Mm. Aww. Look at this. He can't. He just can't. At least Jane was safe of that. The ears are all folded back. He's Oh, love the kisses. <laughs> so it's like, am I doing this right? <laughs> Jay's like, this is my first kiss and he's dead. <laughs> yeah, right there while well, Jack watched like a fucking creep. But it worked. Oh my god, Carcat. It is like your shitty shipping grid is coming true right before her very eyes. <laughs> Remember when you made that ugly thing? Who gives a fuck about shipping? Oh, or my ludicrous stranglehold over all topics concerning romance. I'm still talking. He woke up alive on Durst and met with Rose. That was the end of the line for Alpha Dave. To my knowledge, he doesn't time travel after that, and he and Rose stay on Durst waiting for the bomb until you start the, the scratch. But I can't see either of them because the blackout lingering around Rose for whatever reason. Nobody knows what's up with that. Regardless, his job is to plot a course through the ring to find the sun. When he does, either he or Rose will deliver the bomb. I don't know which. So I need to find fan art of this. That's so cute. In a really morbid homestuck way. It's so funny the things we start finding cute. I'm like staring at this picture thinking how adorable it is. How would I even explain that to somebody? Oh look, it's a picture of this 13 year old girl with her, her crush and he's dead and she needs to kiss him so he'll like come back to life in his dream version. Isn't that cute? And they're like, what? And it's like, oh, he was killed by an anthropomorphic evil dog thing with missing arm and tentacles. What? <laughs> Let me tell you about Homestuck. <laughs> wow, it's three in the morning and my sense of humor is going off the charts here. Um. Okay. Now leave and never darken my door again. Ugh, I've got to fix all this. <laughs> Here we do. That picture's still hanging out right there.
But now they don't have dream selves left. Yeah. Whoever goes will be risking their life for good, won't they? That would be the logical extension of those facts, yes. This is unacceptable. Couldn't I do it? I am apparently immortal because of this god tier business, so the bomb probably would not kill me. Okay, but don't you think there's a remote possibility that going on a suicide mission to save all of reality would count as a heroic death? Hmm. Maybe I could try to not be all that brave while I do it? You asshole, of course you'd be brave. That tends to be what happens when you do something really fucking courageous. Yeah, I just don't want to lose anybody else is all. That's just how it is. I've lost friends for way more pointless reasons. You're all out of options here. You'd be risking death just as much as they would, and they're better qualified to handle the mission as dirt streamers. Jade's dream self is dead too, so she's out. Or to be more specific, her dream self is an overly emotional dog who went off with whimpering somewhere. I'm pretty sure she will be completely useless. Oh, yeah. She mentioned something like that. She said she prototyped her dream self? What happened with that? She doesn't like to talk about it. Kind of a sore subject. Why? She thinks she's selfish and completely hysterical and I guess hates the part of herself she represents. But I mean, the thing is, she spent a long time being dead and moving on. It's not like you could just bring somebody back and expect them to give a shit about all the stuff you think is important. I've tried to tell her that her sprite self is probably nowhere near as despicable as she's making, herself, making out with herself to be. I mean, making herself out to be. You know what I mean. Look, I'm just saying. We've all got our flaws, even her. And for all the shit she's been giving me on this subject, she keeps herself dangling from a very high hook. She'd be doing me a major personal solid by making at least some attempt to get herself off. Wait, fuck, what did I just say? Wow. I mean, let herself off. The hook. The fucking hook. It's a figure of goddamn speech. Raise his eyebrows. Put those back down before my hot acid rage breath burns them off your idiotic face. Okay, I'm putting them back down as not suggestively as possible. What were you even talking about? It wasn't this, whatever this is. What is what this is? It's nothing, you shit. It has been the conversational equivalent of us whistling through our snort barrels while touching each other inappropriately. Was... was that another weird erotic slip of the tongue? No, that was me being worked up into this ridiculous fucking conniption and saying something inflammatory. God, how does that not be clear by now? Okay, well, what I'm getting from this, aside from the possibility that Jade may or may not have kissed Dog Jade at some point, is that neither of them will be able to help with the bomb plan. That's exactly right! The pajama prodigy used his puzzle sponge today. Besides, Jade is responsible for other important parts of the plan. For one thing, you'll have to wait for her to send you the code for the quills. You can't scratch the mesa without them. She got them from her denizen, or will later on her timeline, now that she lit the forge and woke the monster up. Aren't those the really tough to kill guys? Yeah. Did she kill him? Hell if I know, her explanation of the entire encounter boiled down to, and I quote, shenanigans. Limed for infuriatingly vague. <laughs> anyway, after she gives that to you, she then has to go through with the rest of the plan, which is making sure you all survive after the scratch, minus one of the dirt streamers, of course. The plan revolves around some really baffling hand-wavy mumbo-jumbo, which I don't really understand, but she told me to trust her about it because the info comes from a reliable informant. Whitened for smug tool. It involves something to do with a yellow lawn ring, which isn't the human word for it. It's just your word is so dumb I feel dumb saying it. Word for what? I guess your entire escape plan somehow pivots critically around an unwatered piece of residential property. It doesn't matter what it means. Jade says she has this figured out, and I don't have time to do much but trust her. The point is, she's all booked up and all too mortal. So she won't be delivering the bomb, and neither will you. Okay, well, what about this? Since she is mortal, and I am not, sort of, and I don't need to do the scratch for a while, can I go help her? Maybe she could use a protection? Maybe that is what Dave was trying to do when he temporarily died. Remember, Jack is still on the loose. He has killed Dave, and Rose and Dave once, and me twice. No, 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 no. Sweet, bleeding Jigus, Egbert. You keep bragging about your immortality and then brainlessly announce plans to go off and do something heroic. You're going to have the shortest lifespan of any immortal in history. Makes sense in context. Sorry. Besides, it's a total non-issue. Jack wouldn't hesitate to stab you again, but he won't hurt Jade for some reason. If anything, you could use her protection. Really? I never noticed when looking through her timeline earlier. It wasn't until talking to her in those time frames that she told me. He just keeps following her around. I can see him off in the distance in some frames, lurking there, shadowing her movements. It's incredibly disturbing. 
He lingers around her until the scratch begins, and I lose the feed, never once doing anything threatening. She says she thinks it's because Jack inherited the loyalty of her Lucis. The loyalty? If she's right, I guess her Lucis really did offer her the most protection possible by prototyping itself, albeit by dooming us all, the idiot. Aw, that's actually kind of cute. Sadly, he holds no such loyalty to any of us here. He regards us all as ripe for the repeated skewering. Oh, fuck, maybe we should have all just dressed like Jade? I can't believe this stroke of genius only occurred to me now. I don't think he would be fooled. Dogs have a pretty good sense of smell. It was a motherfucking joke. <laughs> Damn.